Hey everybody, hi, it's Tamara from Moogly, and I am back on YouTube for another live. Sorry, I just making sure it was I really live. I think I'm live now. It's always hard to tell. How are you doing today? I hope you're well. It is the end of March, March 27th, 2019. So I thought I would come live again here on YouTube and wrap up the month and talk about something exciting happening this summer. So good afternoon, Denisha. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Everybody who's here, I see there's already a few of you. Any hearts to let me know it's working. Um, I'm going to be switching to a little different screen a little later in this video. You'll still be able to see me, but I need to check something to say it right to you. So I'll be popping back and forth a little bit later, and I need you guys to let me know whether or not it's working and that you can still see me. Um, unfortunately, you can't go, well, maybe you can't go fake live on YouTube and test it out, but I haven't figured it out yet. So here we are. Anyway, hi, everybody. Hi, Patty, Tracy, Darlene, Chris. <laughs> Good to see you again. Penny, Karen, Jamie, Debbie, Carol, Stephanie, thank you all so much for being here. So first things first, let's do a quick recap of what happened on Moogly this month and a quick look at what's coming ahead. If you watched on Facebook this morning, you may have already seen this, so we'll do it a little bit quicker. Um, and if you go to, I, oh shoot, did I put the link in the description? I don't know if I put the link in the description, but if you go to mooglyblog.com today, then there are links to everything I will be discussing here. And if I forgot to put it in the description, then I will pin it to the top of the comments. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, one thing you wouldn't have seen if you were just following on YouTube is that I had another Cricut project this past month and I have misplaced the unwound one. Here we go. Hold on, so many things to show. Ah, so I made sheep yarn bobbins. Let me hold it up here so you can see. There we go. And that's what it looks like without the yarn on it. And there it is with the yarn. And these are great if you do any sort of color work with crochet or knitting um, or embroidery for that matter, uh, cross stitch. The, with the Cricut program, you can shrink these down smaller and make them just the right size for thread, make them bigger. If you just wanted like a cool display piece, you could use a whole skein of, this is Red Heart Sweet Home, which is super fun for the sheep. So anyway, those are up for free on the blog right now. Um, if you have a Cricut, you can do those. Um, if not, it's just an idea. Maybe you can interpret for yourself. Uh, and then there were crochet patterns, of course. The Diamond Crochet Hat currently has a YouTube video tutorial, both right and left-handed, up now. So here it is sort of moving around in person again with the great removable pom-pom. And it is made with Red Heart Hookah Charm. Um, again, I you know, they send stuff out to the stores. Stores say they'll take stuff. You never know which individual store is going to carry what. So when people say where to get the iron, I would say look in your local store. And if you don't see it there, go to redheart.com. But this is Hookah Charm. And you can see, hopefully, that little that little fleck of blue, that's a sparkle. Hard, always hard to get sparkles to show up on camera, but this yarn has sparkle. It's a subtle sparkle. The sparkles are the same color as the yarn itself, but it is so pretty. So I hope you guys will check that out. So lots of comments. I just want to make sure I don't have any questions about the hat. Hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm so happy you guys all tuned in. Hooray. Okay, no questions about the hat, so we'll move on. Um, then the next one, what was the next one? Was the Pixie Shawlette. Let me unbury it here from the other stuff. There we are. And I was wearing this one a little bit earlier, but I took it off because I wanted to show how big it is. This is the finished Pixie Shawlette. And this is made with one ball of Red Heart Croquette right here. Now, yes, this one little ball made this big shawl. And it is a shawlette. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily an over the shoulder size. That'd be kind of small. But I think it's good for, you know, this style. Absolutely, with a little shawl pin there. Um, so, but the way I wrote the pattern is you can just keep going. This is the last row right down here. So you can keep growing this shawl to be as big as you want. You would just need more yarn. And right and left-handed video tutorials are up on YouTube for this one as well. Tomorrow, there will be two new video tutorials, one right, one left, for the cozy, oh, it's got a long name, this one, Cozy Couch and Bedside Organizer Caddy, which you can see right here. It's basically a very simple pattern, great for beginners. Um, so it's got, got this part that sort of scoots between the bed and the mattress or down the side of your couch if you want to use it over your the arm of your couch. And then you've got pockets for your remotes, your reading glasses, um, whatever book, crochet project, whatever you want to stick in there. It's just sort of an extra handy pocket to have around the house. And like I said, a great beginner pattern. Um, this one was made with Red Heart with Love right there. Um, one of my favorite yarns, um, just for all purpose house things. It's great. It washes great. It dries in the dryer. Stands up to my kids, my dog, my life. Absolutely love it. So definitely check that out too. 
All right, so those were the patterns. Um, and then the giveaways right now, and again, you won't see this if you're just watching on YouTube, so you have to go to mooglyblog.com uh, to see these things. So there is a giveaway for the Red Heart Croquette, 10 balls of them. Uh, there is a giveaway for, I have so many giveaways going on, I have to have a list. Let's see, oh, my glasses, my reading glasses. That's probably why I'm having trouble with my list. I'm not wearing them, but they glare a little bit. So I'm trying not to wear them on camera, but these are from readers.com. I absolutely love them. Definitely check that out. Um, great for seeing not just your reading, but your stitching. And then finally, right now, just started this week, I have a giveaway for Unicorn Clean. Um, these are fiber rinses and washes for your yarn, which are absolutely fantastic. I use the fiber rinse. Um, I just put a little bit of, the, of it in the water uh, that I use to block all my things. Um, love it. Makes it smell great. Makes the stitches lie really nicely. Uh, makes the yarn a little bit softer. Not that most yarns need it, but that's always nice too, right? So anyway, again, check in with comments. Like I said, I'm having trouble because I don't have my reading glasses on. Hi, everybody. Oh, thank you so much. Yay. So, all right. Whew, quick recap. <clears throat> that's everything that's happened and what you've got to look forward to next. Coming up in April. I don't know if this one's going to get a video tutorial. It's very, it's, it's going to have a photo tutorial though, for sure. This one will probably, probably be the first crochet pattern uh, on Moogly in April. It's almost done right here. The Tilted Heart Tote. And you can see right here, this section, hopefully you can see, is not crochet. This middle section is actually made with a Leisure Art Diamond Art Kit. You can kind of see the sparkle of the heart there. Those are little gems, and it's done on this canvas. They're really super neat. Um, check out the link again on mooglyblog.com in today's post. But it basically comes with the canvas, the gems. Um, the canvas is already sticky. It's really fun. It's hard to describe. It's a, sort of a mix between cross stitch and puzzles and stickers and pixel art, but it's a lot of fun and I have figured out how to incorporate it in crochet. So if you don't wanna use that part, um, it'll be pretty easy enough to just make a square to go in that section. But otherwise, I think this will be a really fun way to combine crochet and those diamond art kits. So that will be coming out next month. Um, also next month, I hope to have a new little sweater um, or a little top layer, perfect for those chilly summer offices and you know that over air conditioned spaces with Red Heart Amore. I've used that this yarn before on a series of patterns on Moogly, um, which I have video tutorials here on YouTube. Um, super soft, crazy soft yarn. If you haven't spotted this yet, if you do spot it, pick some up, give it, at least give it a good feel, give it a squish. It is so, so yummy. And then the featured yarn for next month will be Red Heart Soft Essentials Baby. Now, Soft Essentials is something I've only seen at my local Michaels and, of course, redheart.com. I haven't seen the baby version out yet anywhere in person, but doesn't mean it's not out there. And like I said, always on redheart.com. But this one comes in both variegated <laughs> and solids. Obviously, I haven't crocheted or knit with it yet, although I've used Soft, Essent soft Essentials the non-baby. I haven't used the baby yet, but I'm excited to give it a try. Um, and I will definitely have a pattern and a giveaway and a yarn love video and all that fun stuff for that in April. So that is just some of the things to look forward to. <sighs> and that is the recap. All right. Take a deep breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. Take a deep of water and everything. Hi. Okay. Oh, Nicole, you like the diamond painting too? It is so much fun. Oh, yay. Okay. So what I wanted to talk with you guys about today um, it's going to be relatively quick because I am struggling a little bit to talk the seasonal colds and, <clears throat> excuse me, it's getting to me now, the pollen going around has made it a little tricky. So I want to do something a little quicker today, but also very excited. And I wanted to tell you about the Chainlink 2019 conference. This is happening, um, let me say I wrote down the exact date so I wouldn't get it wrong, July 10th through the 14th, excuse me, 10th through the 13th in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, not Manchester, England, Manchester, New Hampshire. And this is the conference for the Crochet Guild of America. Um, their website is crochet.org. And basically, it's the only exclusively crochet in-person conference, as far as we know about, in the country, possibly the world. Um, I was interested in joining the Crochet Guild of America when I was a hobbyist. It wasn't in my budget. Um, but that said, it is very inexpensive. It's only, I think, $35, $40 for a year, and it includes a magazine subscription. Um, so when I did finally join, when I started working professionally in the industry, I realized not only what I'd been missing out on, but how great 
CGOA is and just how much fun the conferences are. Um, it's a great way to help support crochet, you know, throughout the year being involved with CGOA. And at this point now I'm actually on the board, full disclosure, I am a board member. Um, but the conference itself is really the highlight of the year. And it is so much fun. And it's not just for professionals. That's something I wish I'd been able to go when I was a hobbyist as well. It's a fantastic opportunity if you are a hobbyist to take classes, to uh, meet professionals who are in the industry, if that's something you're interested in. I mean, I'll certainly be there. I know Marley will be there. Jesse from Jesse at Home will be there. Pia from Stitches and Scraps will be there. I mean, so many people will be there. Everybody will be there. So if you do, if you're interested in meeting designers, that's a great opportunity to do that, certainly. But the classes themselves and the camaraderie and just spending a few days with people who are just as excited about crochet as you are is really phenomenal. Um, so if you have any opportunity at all to check it out, I strongly recommend it. Now, I wanted to tell you, and this is where I'm switching, switching back and forth. I've switched to another screen. I can't see you guys. Well, I can't see you guys anyway, but I can't see myself right now. So when I do that, are you guys able to see me? Can you let me know? All right. I'll have to wait and see. Somebody let, drop me a comment and let me know when I'm on this screen, if you can see me. Um, hopefully you can, otherwise it's gonna be the weirdest YouTube video ever. <laughs> so yes, you can see me. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Had to check. All right. So basically I've hopped over to crochet.org and I just want to tell you guys um, exactly how to get there to the conference information. Um, but of course I needed to be looking at the website to do that. So if you go to crochet.org, there is a green menu bar, similar to Moogly, right across the top and it's under conference. You wanna sort of hover over that conference one, and drop down on there. It works better right now on laptop. We're working on a new website. It's not super mobile friendly right now. Um, it's okay, but it's better if you've got a computer to get on um, right now. So if you go to the conference tab, you can see events, lodging, educators, class list, boutique marketplace, which is awesome, the design competition, and the chapter challenge. Now, anybody can come to Chainlink 2019. You don't have to be a CGOA member. That said, if you become a CGOA member, not only do you get a subscription to Crochet Magazine included, which is great, comes throughout the year, um, but you also get discounts on things at the conference, like the classes are a little less expensive, um, the boutique marketplace entry becomes free, things like that. Um, and also then you have the opportunity to enter the design competition. Um, so I'm not sure where to start. There's so many exciting things. So let's go ahead and start there with the design competition. I actually volunteered, uh, gosh, I guess it was, was it two years ago now? Two years ago now, um, would have been 2017, Jesse from Jesse at Home. And I uh, co-chaired the design competition. And what that meant was people from all over the country and indeed all over the world. I even got some packages from as far away as Singapore. Um, people would send me their stuff and I would take photographs and then we hauled it all up to Chicago, which is where the conference was that year, and displayed it. And then a panel of judges, who is secret until after the judging, uh, comes through, but they are crochet experts, professionals, people who know their stuff. They come through, they pick the best projects in each category, and then there is an evening of awards. And these aren't just awards, these include cash prizes. So it's very, very exciting. And if you have any interest at all in entering that, I strongly recommend it. It's a great way to just share in the fun. It's a great way to possibly make a little money for your crochet. And if you are interested in getting started professionally, it can be a great way to get your uh, designs out there and get them noticed. Because of course, you better believe the magazine editors and such are all there too, peeking around and seeing what's all out on that table. So that's the design competition. Um, and that is a really fun event. As for the other events, um, we're starting a new one this year, Wednesday night, Manchester Mardi Gras. It's going to be a super fun sort of Mardi Gras themed party, just an icebreaker, get everybody started. We've got some fun crafts and things lined up. Um, the details are not mine to share, but there is going to be, oh my gosh, we've got so much fun. There's going to be music. We've got a super fun host uh, with a fantastic accent. That's the only clue I can give right now, but she's amazing and it's going to be so much fun. Um, earlier in the day, Wednesday, there are two other options that day. There's Master's Day for those who are taking the Mastering Crochet classes through CGOA to get more hands-on help. Another fun thing the CGOA offers, but that's a story for another time. Um, and then also there's Professional Development Day. So if you're interested in becoming a crochet professional or you are a crochet professional, that's an excellent day. Um, I'll be leading some of the breakout sessions in the afternoon. Uh, there's a great speaker in the morning lined up, so it's very exciting. 
Um, then on Thursday, there are classes, classes, classes. And these aren't just learn how to crochet classes. I mean, I don't think there is even is a learn how to crochet class. You can look at the class list in a minute, but there are fantastic, fantastic classes by amazing teachers this year. I'll tell you about the teachers in a minute. Um, then Thursday night, the market preview, if you're a member, um, yes, it's the members only, it's the marketplace preview. And what this is, is um, shops from all over, whoever wants to come, could be um, local yarn stores, uh, could be some bigger companies, um, maybe some bead companies, some book companies, all sorts of, whoever wants to come in and sell stuff. There's usually some cool shawl pin um, booths, um, just so many fun things. I always end up spending some money in the marketplace and it's always an exciting place to be. There's also raffles and giveaways happening. So that's a lot of fun. Friday, of course, another full day of classes, whatever you want to take, so many fun things. Um, we're also holding the Fastest Fingers contest, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, assuming it's run the same way as last year. I'm not in charge of it, but assuming it's run the same way as last year, it's pretty much come on, sit down, give it a shot. You might win. It's a lot of fun. Very informal. Um, just a super fun time. Uh, but one of the more new features that we have there. And then Friday night is the excellent in, Excellence in Crochet event. Um, super fun, just not to be missed. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, no charge for going to that one, I don't believe. So, you know, why not? If you're going to be there, come to that. Uh, then there's a Friday night sing-along, which is brand new this year. So if you're looking for something to do Friday night, you can bring your crochet down and join us for that. And then on Saturday, again, classes. The finale of the Fastest Fingers contest where the top people have their runoff. Um, the marketplace, of course, is still open all day, Friday and Saturday. And then Saturday night, the entire event concludes with the CGUA Banquet and Fashion Show. And this is where people wear, I mean, well, people have been wearing their crochet the whole week, but this is where people really show off their crochet. Everybody's wearing their most beautiful crochet dress or shawl or whatever they have, if they have it. Um, and there is a fashion show and there are a couple speakers and there's usually some giveaways and it's just a super, super fun time. Um, like I said, I will definitely be there at the banquet. I will be there the entire week, but um, guaranteed, I will be at that banquet. And again, that's all I can say about that one for right now. Um, last year though, I will say Marley, Bird and I hosted it together. Super fun, super fun. Um, gonna make it, you know, it's gonna be even better this year. Absolutely, I'm excited for it. And I hope you are too. So those are some of the events going on. Let me hop back over to where I can see you guys so I can see if you have any questions about it. All right. Awesome. No questions about that. So that's good so far. Um, and then hopping over to the educators. I said I wanted to tell you guys who's teaching this year. These are some names. If you, oh my gosh, these are names that I've been admiring since before I was designing. Um, some of these are whoo, just amazing. Let's go ahead and get into it. Robin. Again, this is the problem. Everybody's name is on a book. Nobody's books say their names out loud. So, out loud, so I'm probably going to mispronounce it. But Robin, I can never say this right. Chachula, Chakula, I cannot say it right. I'm so sorry, Robin. I've even met her in person. She's fantastic. I cannot say her last name, but you would know her stuff if you saw it. Um, she's the author of Modern Vintage Crochet, uh, Blueprint Crochet Sweaters, um, the Crochet Stitches Visual Encyclopedia. You know her stuff. Um, she's fantastic, and she'll be there teaching. Lily Chin, amazing. Lily is a genius. She's um, she's the lady. If you if you might remember, it was I don't remember. It was like 1999, somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, the lady who came on, David Letterman, and tried to crochet him a sweater during the course of the show. That was Lily Chin. She's hilarious. She's funny. Um, there's nobody like her. So definitely check out her classes if you get an opportunity. I've loved everything I've taken with her. Uh, Linda Dean is teaching and Linda Dean is actually the Crochet Guild of America president right now. Um, but she's also one of the most knowledgeable people I know about fiber. If I have a question about fiber, um, like, you know, wait a minute, what does this mean? You know, if you, what happens if you blend alpaca and bamboo? I don't know. I think Linda would know. So she's fantastic. Absolutely great. Edie Ekman, of course, is a name you probably know. She's got a bunch of books, Crochet Borders Every Which Way. Um, she teaches all over. She's got craftsy classes. As, you know, she's fantastic. Um, Jenny King, absolutely wonderful. Jenny King is Australian. She has this amazing accent, but she's also a fantastic designer. And she 
does this amazing system of, um, oh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but she's got this granny system where you can turn granny squares into, or the granny stitch, I should say, into garments, like in this very, it's very, I, I don't want to say easy, but it's a, it's a system she's got, it works for everybody. It's really genius. Um, but she's a lot of fun. She teaches a lot of fun things. I took um, a class from her on garments and uh, simple garment shapes. And I will tell you what, that's honestly one of the things that gave me courage, that gave me the, uh, the knowledge that I needed to start designing garments on Moogly. So that's, I recommend her stuff very highly. Melissa Leitman, of course, an amazing author and designer. Um, the other day, actually, I just posted on Facebook about her book. She wrote this book. She's written a bunch of books, but this is one of the ones I have that I use all the time, Indispensable Stitch Collection for Crocheters. Absolutely great. Susan Lohman, she is amazing. She's great at thread, tatting, many other things, of course. She's another great teacher. She's at thecrochetarchitect.com. Jennifer Ryan, known for her Celtic designs. Um, if anytime I see something with like a Celtic knot on it or some intricate stuff like that, I always have to look and see if it was one of Jennifer's designs. Um, the way her brain works and with these knots, I, I tell you what, I would have to take a class definitely to understand how she comes up with these knots. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, Sharon Silverman, not as familiar with Sharon. I know she has many, many books out. Um, and it looks like she was on HGTV. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I don't know her personally, but she is a very well-known author and teacher. And then of course, not last but not least is Mary Beth Temple, a good friend of mine. She again is, she has over 300 designs. She is an author of many, many books, um, teacher. And she actually, come think of it, designed the most recent Moogly Crochet Along Square. This one right here. So she's an absolutely wonderful, great teacher, great lady, and I cannot recommend her enough. So those are some of the teachers teaching. Now I won't read you the entire class list because that would be crazy and we'd be here all day. Um, but suffice to say, there are all skill level, intermediate and advanced crochet classes. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about this conference. Um, there's only really one class that's considered advanced, but even having intermediate classes, is amazing for crochet. I know so often when I go to events, all the crochet classes are, I mean, they're for beginners, which is great. Absolutely, there needs to be classes for beginners too. But it's really nice when you've been crocheting for a while to be able to go somewhere and take a class that, you know, is gonna teach you something new and exciting. And that's something I've always definitely found to be true at Crochet Guild of America classes. Now, some have taken and it turns out I knew the stuff, but I'm the one who took that class. Um, you know, now I know I need to sign up for more advanced ones the first year. I didn't know how much I knew. So that's okay too. Um, definitely explore. Don't be afraid to sign up for something. You know, don't think you can't get it. Um, I have found even classes where maybe I was a little in, in over my head. The people sitting around me were always really helpful. And I've honestly, I've made so many friends in those classes. Um, even when I walked out, maybe not completely grasping the subject, I walked out with a new friend. Everybody there at the Crochet Guild of America chain link conference is so friendly and so nice. And it's just always a wonderful experience. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about for that. Like I say, there's a marketplace, there's the events, there's the classes, um, and it's just super fun. Uh, people tend to all get in the same hotel. Right now, uh, the block was sold out, but I believe they were trying to add some more hotel rooms. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. In the evenings, everybody hangs out, whether there's an event or not. People are usually down in the lobby in either the crochet lounge, there's always a yarn lounge set up, or maybe at the bar, you know, there's different groups, uh, different things for everybody there um, or in the restaurant. It's just, it's fantastic. And you can absolutely walk up to me there and say, hi, I would love to meet any of you if you come. Um, like I said, I'll be there. So many people will be there and it will be just be a super fun time. You don't have to be a professional. Um, if you want to be a professional, it is definitely a great place to go though. Uh, besides the design competition, there's also the editor meet and greet, which I forgot to mention. Uh, that one is basically the editors of magazines and yarn companies, the people who buy patterns have a time where they are in a room and you can go in and get on a list and sit down, show them your designs, show them what you make, show them what you can do. And it's your chance to sit down literally and meet with the designer, the editors of magazines. I mean, I don't know anywhere else you can just walk in and do that. I think that's a really neat opportunity there. So I hope you guys will check it out. Yes. So anyway, it's in New Hampshire. Like I said, it's in New Hampshire this year. It does move around every year. Um, we try to move it to a different part of the country every year. Uh, so next year it will be, um, 
I can't say where yet, but it will definitely be more in the Midwest, we'll say, or the that section of the United States, if you sort of sliced it that way. Um, and then I'm trying to think what else I want to say about it. Oh, one other thing I did want to mention. Good thing I wrote this down. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Sunday and Monday after the Crochet Guild of America conference, the Craft, Craft Yarn Council is offering their certified instructor program. So you could come to the Chainlink 2019 and then stay a couple more days and take this program. And this is a certification program. Um, but I know it, I, I know at one time Michael's required it. I don't know um, exactly who requires it right now, but it's definitely, um, it's just a great program. Uh, resume builder. If you want to teach crochet professionally, you know, having that certification is a huge, huge plus. Because Craft Yarn Council is kind of whoo, where we all go for all those standards and sizing and abbreviations and all that stuff. So definitely lots of opportunities there. Again, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, I hope you'll check it out. And since my voice is starting to go, <clears throat> darn pollen, I am going to go ahead and sign off for this month. But I will be back again next month with another live. And I would love to, by then, assuming I have my voice back, uh, tackle a topic you guys are interested in. If there's something that you think would be, um, that would work on live. I know once one person said at one point, they really want to see how to fix crochet that's been um, accidentally ripped or torn. And I would love to go over that, but I think I need to do that in an over the shoulder video so you guys can really see my hands. Um, these lives aren't quite as conducive to that. So if there's a topic you think I can tackle in live, please do let me know. Um, leave it in the comments if you're watching this afterwards. Um, I try and read everything that I can, absolutely. Um, especially here on YouTube, I usually manage to read everything. So I appreciate you tuning in and I am going to let you go so you can get on with your day and I can go pick up my kids from their early release. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crocheting and happy knitting and happy crafting. And I will see you next month, if not before. I'll be back tomorrow with a pre-recorded uh, video tutorial for that bed pocket. So I'll see you there. Bye, everybody. Thanks so much.